Shalom, shalom to everyone watching. This is Rabbi Moshe Otero with the Ways of Israel. And as we're doing each morning, we try to cover a little bit more on the safe. Uh, the series is being uh, basically brought to you in memory of George Albo, a good friend, a descendant of uh, Yosef Albo, um, originally from Cuba. Um, and so we're doing this in his memory. Uh, he passed away about a year ago. And I made a commitment to to present something in his memory, and so thus we are doing this series uh, on the Sefer High Kareem, which is the fundamentals of Judaism. So, from a perspective from Rabbi Joseph Albo, a 15th century Jewish um, scholar, and thus we're going to continue this morning with Chapter 16 of Book One of Sefer High Kareem. So he begins in chapter 16 regarding some ancient thinkers have denied the possibility of knowledge and it's possible they say to know a thing as it really is and this for two reasons first because of all knowledge comes from antecedent knowledge prior knowledge in other words but this antecedent knowledge in turn was an object of investigation and came from antecedent knowledge and the same thing applies to the latter and so the thing goes on ad, on ad infinitum. But where there is infinite regress, no knowledge can be comprehended. The second reason is that is this: anything that is known through syllogistic demonstration was either known before it was proved, or not. If it was known before; it needs no proof. If it was known, if it was not known before, how could one know? that it might be ascertained by proof. But these two reasons, they said, that there is no such thing as knowledge, and no one can never acquire knowledge which he does not possess. The true philosopher, however, refuted their arguments. The first argument, they say, does not hold. There is no infinite regress, and as skeptics think, for not all knowledge comes from antecedent knowledge which in turn is a result of investigation. Knowledge may come from antecedent knowledge, which is not in turn acquired by investigation or deduction. It may come from knowledge which a person has inherent in his reason. Certain knowledge may has, man has by his rational nature is not derived from other knowledge. The knowledge which is rooted in reason is called first principle. They are the first because they are not derived from other knowledge but are innate. These principles are the basic, the basis of science, and from them is knowledge derived. The second argument, they answer as follows. It is not true that what is known can never be known. It may be ascertained by syllogistic proof, but syllogism is constructed. The thing is known potentially on the premise, or in the premises. The conclusion of syllogism makes the knowledge actual. And reason itself declares that knowledge arrived at in this way in certain absolute. There are two ways of acquiring and perfecting knowledge are innate in human reason, and one does not know how he comes to have them. That is true. Conception of knowledge is proven also from Job or Job. Job complains of God's ways and finds fault with God for the perfect order of nature as he thinks. Wherefore is light given to him that is in misery and life and the bitter soul? He exclaims, God answers Job, and you are hardihood, so to say the order of nature would be better arranged on another plan. You do not even know the causes of those natural things which are in your own body, and you venture to speak about things higher up. You presume to pass judgment on God's knowledge and conduct when you do not even know how to how you came by that power which enables you to acquire your own knowledge this is the meaning of the words used by god in his first answer who laid down the security of wisdom or who hath given understanding to the mind and i think that the that the bet of the word batuchot um, is part of the root and not the prefix as an expression and they that provoke God are secure, batachot, which the word 
Sekhi, mind is derived from. The same root as Vayistake, which is an Aramaic translation of the Hebrew Vayashef, which he looked and signifies the human mind. So the best commentators understand the word. The first principles or axioms are called Batahot Chokmah, securities of wisdom, because they are the foundation of science, giving man the assurance of acquiring knowledge which cannot be gotten without them. Saki denotes the human intellect, the inventor of the syllogism, by the conclusion is derived by the premises. The faculty which in Hebrew is called Bina, understanding, and which rabbis explain as the power of inferring one thing from another. The meaning of the passage in Job is that God upbraided Job by pointing out to him that he does not even know how he came how he came by the first principles, which are the security of knowledge, etc. Man acquires knowledge through them, but he does not know how they came to him and whence, except that he has them through the will of God. As David said, Thou desirest the truth of Batuhot. This then is the meaning of the word in Job, who laid down the security, the Batuhot, of the truth, who put them originally in man, and of natural law demands it that they should exist in man rather than all other animals. And as he says further in the criticism, assuming the existence of the first principle in man, he does not know who gave the human mind intelligence to understand the conclusion which follows the premises. And it constitutes knowledge. This too exists in man through the will of God. That is to say what David meant when he said, when he said in an allusion to the two kinds of knowledge, Behold, thou desirest the truth of Batuhot, and make me, therefore, to know the wisdom of the hidden. The words thou desireth, Batuhot, refers to the first principle which exists in man through the will of God. The words make me, or to know wisdom of the hidden, refers to the fact that the knowledge is which is acquired concerning a thing formerly hidden is also due to the will of God. Likewise, King Solomon said, For the Lord giveth wisdom. Out of the mouth comes the knowledge and understanding. The meaning is what the, the, the what wisdom or science comes from God without his mouth, though or through his will um, comes knowledge, etc., the first principle and understanding, the ability to draw a conclusion from the premises. Now these two powers exist in man, but we know not how they came to be, and to be right there whence they come. But we know that they are in the same man, by the divine grace, in order that by means of them man may have knowledge and understanding. Now this is the meaning also of the benediction instituted by the rabbis, beginning, Thou in thy graciousness giveth man knowledge and teacheth intelligence, intelligent man understanding. The first principles are called knowledge simply. Hence it says, In thy graciousness giveth man, giveth man or Adam knowledge, meaning that this knowledge is found equally in all human, uh, humankind, mankind, requiring no learning, but exists by divine grace, the sequel, and teaches intelligence to man, and knowledge, understanding, refers to the ability to draw conclusion from the premises, this being the meaning of the term understanding. The ability he, he imitates is based upon natural learning, and is ascribed to the intelligent man, the enosh, to indicate that not mankind, all of mankind, or Adam, makes use of the understanding, but only alone the Enosh, the man, to indicate that not all mankind makes use of understanding, but only a kind of man, Enosh. The benediction concludes with the words, Thou who, who, who granteth first principle, and not the special kindness, which is, to be, is not to be shared by all, but it is proper that we should pray for more even than the knowledge and understanding. We should pray also for intelligence, Haskell, um, this refers to divine things, as we read that he understandeth Haskell, 
in Hebrew, and knoweth me. That part of the above benediction, therefore, which contains the words of prayer, includes all three. And grant unto us graciously from thee knowledge, understanding, and intelligence. And we pray that the first principle may avail us so that through them we may acquire understanding and intelligence. And so also the rabbis say, if there is no knowledge, there is no, pre there is, there is no understanding. If not for the first principle, man would not be able to draw conclusions from premises. And if there is no understanding, there's no knowledge. The meaning is, if a man is not to make use of his understanding to infer one thing from the another so as to acquire knowledge, the first principle uh, are given to him in vain. And thus, this is also the meaning of Solomon when he says, For wisdom shall enter into thy heart, and knowledge shall be pleasant unto thy soul. Discretion shall watch over thee to deliver thee from the way of evil. The meaning is when wisdom or science is based upon true premises shall enter into thy heart and the knowledge shall be pleasant unto thy soul. If you make proper use of the first principle, the then shall discretion watch over thee and, and discernment shall guard thee that thou may not be misled by erroneous ideas. And this is expressed in the sequel, to deliver thee from the way of evil, from the men that speak forward, forward things, who leaves the path of righteousness. The meaning of this understanding is properly, and it's used and is based upon the true premises, and it will guide man in the path of uprightness, and he will not stumble. As it says in Proverbs chapter 3, trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not unto your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall deliver you. He shall guide your path. Well, we end here chapter 16 from the words of Sefer Karim in Proverbs chapter 3. And in the next chapter, chapter 17, we will continue to see how every science, every knowledge is, has to use the principles and postulate which are self-evident according to Rabbi Albo, but are assumed to be true and borrowed from another science, which are, which are they to be proved as well. So stay tuned for chapter 17 of Sefer Karim and share this video with those who wish to acquire knowledge and understanding and grow in the knowledge of the Word of God, of God, the very existence and principle of our faith. This is Rabbi Moshe Otero, and remember, be part of the Ways of Israel, and share this video with your friends and those who wish to understand the basis, the basics of Judaism. Shalom and bracha to everyone.